Okay, here's a real beaut for you. This is a Nikon F2. It is in a beautiful case that is like mint condition. Well, I'm not sure about mint, there's a couple of little scuffs on it, but it's certainly in really good condition. And we take this off. Everything about this camera is big and gigantic and heavy, and I love it. It's a Nikon F2A. You can tell what model the head is based on what it says right here. There's an F2AS and an F2A. This is the A, which had automatic indexing of the lenses so that those little ears on the top of the lens didn't need to line up with a pin on the head. You could just use a, any A lens or AIS lens or AI lens on this, which is auto indexing AI. You could use any of those on here without worrying about lining up the pin. On some of the older cameras, you had to line up the, the head and put the lens on at 5.6 to make it so that the pins would line up with the metering so that the camera knew what aperture you were on. And that's why those pins are on Nikon cameras. This is a beauty of a camera. I haven't cleaned it up. I just picked it up at an auction. It was $90, not with this lens. It was $90 of all things with a 50 millimeter, no, I'm sorry, a 500 millimeter F8 Tamron mirror super telephoto and macro lens. And I'm like, okay, that's going to go for a bunch. With the case, $90. I'm like, $90? That's a steal. I shot some photos with my... Uh, with a digital camera of my friend's house with that 500 millimeter. He lives way up in the hills and he said he's never seen such a good picture of his house because it's so close up and tack sharp. So this is the uh, camera we're gonna talk about today though. I'll talk about that lens another time, but mostly we're talking about cameras, not lenses. F2AS, it's got a letter K on the, re on the advanced lever. That's because it came with the K screen. They came with different screens, and whatever screen it came with, they actually put a label on there, and the owner never even took that off. It uses a hot shoe. It's a little adapter that moves on right over top of the rewind lever. It actually came with that. It's just a plastic thing with connections that make it a hot shoe with this little connection in the back. But I took that off because it's just in the way for me. I don't use flash, and that's just in the way. I want to be able to rewind the film and have access to it. Again, a camera in really good shape. Viewfinder is perfectly clear. If you put it on any aperture, you can hear the differences. 500. Listen to that crazy clop. 30th. Hear the difference? You're learning. That sounded like an eighth, right? Because it was. It came with this little extension piece, which the shutter is actually right here on in, in this collar, but it's got this little extension piece which somebody paid extra for so that they could make a nice little soft button. That probably cost them 50 bucks. Anyway, it's a really sweet camera as far as build quality. It was the camera that shot the Vietnam War. It shot Woodstock. It's the kind of camera that was everywhere in the press in the 70s. And this one comes with this case. It's in really clean condition. Let's see if I can take it off. Chrome is in nice shape. It's got no brassing on the edges. You uh, turn on the meter by pulling this little lever out and the little red dot shows up. You change the shutter speeds with this control up here. And you can actually see the shutter speeds down here on the back. They're changing. This head is changing the shutter speeds. This is coupled together because the metering in here is coupled to that shutter dial. You could use different heads and there were a lot of different ones available. And if you use a different head, then you would see a different shutter dial. Again, really clean shape. It has a mirror lockup. It has a self timer. It's got a provision for a uh, motor drive. I wouldn't bother with a 35 millimeter film camera nowadays to bother shooting film that quickly, but if ever you're shooting sports, and you wanna shoot 35, 
This would be a workhorse. This will tear through your film in a really short time. Um, looking inside, nope, oh, I just set it off. Looking inside, you turn this lever this way, and you can see the inside is in really clean shape, perfect shape. The other thing about the F2 is, I, I hadn't realized it, I was just watching the movie Blow Up, and in the movie Blow Up, the photographer is using a Nikon F, and the whole door comes off. They hadn't come up with a hinge yet. And when he opens the back, the whole door comes off in a piece. And the F2 was the first camera that actually stayed hinged on so that you didn't have to set it aside and, and, and place it back. Again, you can see the shutter is working well. The advance feels really smooth. I hit that twice. The advance is really smooth and it doesn't feel like it's you know, sloppy, it feels like it's really a smooth advance, in good shape. Closing up the back. Again, you find a camera like this, this camera, you can feel pretty safe that it's all mechanical. When they came out with the F3, that was the next one in, in, the, in the F series, their Pro series, all the Fs with the single digits, like the F1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, were their pro cameras. When they came out with the F3, it was the first camera that had electronics to run the shutter. A lot of pros were against it because they were like, no way, we can't trust electronics. We must have it all mechanical. This is the workhorse. This is an all mechanical shutter. It's hard to make it. If you find one that's working, it's hard to kill it. If you find one that's clean, it's really hard to kill it because it hasn't been worn and abused. But there are a lot of F2s out there, and a lot of them are worn because photojournalists aren't looking to shoot and keep the camera in pretty condition. They're looking to shoot and throw it in the back of their car and run to their next assignment. And things can get dirty, things can get beat up. This camera doesn't look like that's the case. The lens strap is even in clean shape. Again, little clues that you can watch for that tell you how much was it used. This lens, this, this strap feels like it's like in, in mint condition. It's brand new. So again, those are, those are good little add-ons if you're finding a camera and you find a deal. Finding a strap, finding a case, finding the things that you know would cost you more. For $90 for this body with that 500, that was a pretty sweet deal. So. If you have any questions, the, the, hood, the hoods come off. You can take this off and replace it with other hoods. To do that, I think you do is you push this button on the back and this button on the top. And if you push those two together, that might not be the right one. This one and this one on the back, possibly. If I can get it. Okay, so what I have to do is I have to push this button and press this down while pressing this back button. If I can get that. <laughs> I'm not getting it. I don't have any nails to, to push this one button in the back. But you use two buttons. You push two buttons and this whole head comes off. And you can use different heads with these. Um, I think the AS was the second one they made. It was a little more advanced. I would try to find a F2A or an AS if you're looking for an F2 instead of one without a letter there because it has that automatic indexing. But the other ones work fine too and I've had other ones on here like that. So, all right, that's it for now. I'm gonna leave that head on instead of fighting it. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments and I'll get to them. And I love to talk cameras with you. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for more. I'll have more for you all the time. Thanks for watching.